unbelievable. Can you believe it? Elon Musk dropped a bombshell revealing the latest image of the engine bay on Booster 12, and let me tell you, it's something special. Next, the Crew-8 return date was updated. In contrast, NASA still cannot confirm when the next Starliner will fly. As part of your great day so far, let's dive into these updates on today's episode of Great SpaceX. As you can see, the Super Heavy B-12 ended its journey in the most spectacular fashion. All systems functioned seamlessly and in perfect sync, creating an unprecedented feat in spaceflight history. We cannot overlook the 33 engines that worked together to produce the immense thrust required to propel Starship upwards and then safely bring it back to Earth. Each of these engines played a vital role in the success of the mission, pushing the boundaries of what modern rocketry can achieve. Now let's dive deeper into the raw power of Super Heavy. We've talked a lot about the engines before, but every time I see them in action, it feels like we're witnessing something revolutionary. The capability of the Super Heavy engines is something we've discussed at length, especially when drawing comparisons to the legendary Saturn V rocket, which held the record for the highest thrust for decades. However, Starship has redefined that benchmark. During Flight 1, the immense power of its engines was visibly demonstrated when a massive crater formed beneath the orbital launch mount, due to the incredible force generated at liftoff. The sight of debris scattering and the sound waves reverberating across the launch pad highlighted just how extreme these conditions were. On this latest flight, we saw the engines pushed even further. Recently, Elon Musk posted a striking image of the engine bay post-flight, accompanied by the caption, Yeah, it was cooking." The image reveals the engines, especially the 23 inner and middle engines, encased in a fiery blaze during flight. The deep red and orange hues are a testament to the extreme temperatures endured by these engines. Temperatures that would easily melt conventional materials. To put this into perspective, the peak temperature around the nozzles can reach up to 3,000 degrees Celsius, hot enough to incinerate steel. SpaceX engineers have designed the Raptor engines with cutting-edge heat shielding and advanced cooling mechanisms to withstand these conditions. Let's take a moment to appreciate the Raptor engines and their critical role in making all of this possible. Unlike traditional rocket engines, such as those on ULA's Vulcan Centaur or NASA's SLS, the Raptor engines are built for durability and reusability, which are critical to reducing operational costs for future missions. While other systems are designed for a single use or require extensive refurbishment, Raptor engines are pushing the envelope for rapid reuse. Reusability isn't just a buzzword, it's the key to making space travel more accessible. By reusing engines and other rocket components, SpaceX can dramatically cut the cost per launch, paving the way for more frequent missions and, eventually, interplanetary travel. In the past, rockets were discarded after each use. Imagine throwing away an airplane after every flight. The durability of the Raptor engines sets a new standard making ambitious missions like Mars colonization not just a dream, but an achievable reality. This may have occurred in previous flights, but because the rocket landed in the sea, we never got a clear view of the engine bay in such detail. I believe some leftover fuel in the engine bay may have reignited upon landing, causing this dramatic visual effect, but despite that, the engines continued to operate effectively, ensuring a smooth and safe landing. After the flight, it was evident that most of the engines, though their nozzles were slightly warped, were still in good condition and could be reused. This really shows the incredible resilience of the Raptor engines built by SpaceX to be the workhorses for future missions. One particular image stood out, Raptor number 314, or as I like to call it, Raptor Pi, due to its special serial number. The name is fitting given the engine's near-perfect performance during one of the most challenging phases of the mission. If you're a fan, go ahead and type Pi and friends in the comment section to celebrate these small yet mighty warriors. And don't forget to like, share the video, and subscribe to our channel to stay updated on SpaceX's incredible journey. Now let's delve into the sheer power and precision of the Raptor engines during the different phases of flight, particularly landing. You might be wondering, what's the big deal? Well, this goes beyond just an impressive visual. During the descent, only 23 inner and middle engines were activated at T plus 6 minutes and 30 seconds, generating over 5,000 tons of thrust to decelerate the massive booster. 
At this point, the booster was a mere two kilometers from the tower, but still hurtling toward Earth at a blistering 1200 kilometers per hour. In just seven seconds, the engines managed to bring the speed down to about 200 kilometers per hour. Then the three inner gimbal engines producing around 690 tons of thrust took over as the altitude dropped to less than one kilometer. These gimbal engines are equipped with advanced vectoring capabilities, allowing them to precisely control the descent even at high speeds. As it approached the tower, Super Heavy's speed was fine-tuned, allowing it to align perfectly with the chopsticks for a smooth and controlled catch, a feat of engineering that was unimaginable a decade ago. Now, let's rewind a few minutes to the moment Starship lifted off. Unlike landing, liftoff involves all 33 engines firing simultaneously, which together produce over 7,000 tons of thrust. This immense force lifted the 5,000-ton Starship off the ground, overcoming the pull of gravity to ascend into space. But beyond the mechanics, what really excites me is the breathtaking Mach Diamond or Shock Diamond phenomenon created by these engines. For those unfamiliar, Mach Diamonds are formed when a rocket's exhaust gases reach supersonic speeds, creating standing wave patterns in the exhaust plume. These diamonds are not just visually stunning, they also serve as an indicator of high engine efficiency. The Raptor engines on Starship are among the few rocket engines capable of creating these patterns, usually only seen in high-performance jet engines. While a single Raptor engine can generate a mock diamond on its own, all 33 engines working together create a massive and unprecedented display of this effect. And keep in mind, this is only Raptor 2. SpaceX has already revealed Raptor 3, which will deliver up to 9,240 tons of thrust at sea level. Musk also hinted at a future version with engines generating up to 330 tons of thrust each, pushing Starship's liftoff thrust to over 10,000 tons, three times that of the Saturn V. Imagine the mock diamond we'll see with that. I don't know about you, but I can't wait for that moment to happen. And with all this excitement, you might be asking yourself, what's next for Starship? The future is bright, but there are still challenges ahead. SpaceX is constantly innovating, and I'm sure we're going to see some groundbreaking improvements very soon. Beyond engine improvements, Starship's next steps will focus on refining other components such as the thermal protection system and overall structural integrity. After all, reusability isn't all about the engines, it's, it's about making the entire rocket durable enough to withstand multiple launches and re-entries without compromising safety. For example, SpaceX has been experimenting with new materials for the heat tiles to better withstand the intense heat of reentry. If successful, these advancements will make Starship not only more robust but also significantly cheaper to operate than any of its predecessors. Shifting gears for a moment, let's talk about Crew-8. Their return to Earth has faced some weather-related delays, but it's all part of the challenge when it comes to splashdowns. What does this mean for their return, and what's next for NASA and SpaceX? Crew-8 was originally slated to return earlier this month, but due to weather conditions particularly concerning Hurricane Milton, their return has been delayed several times. In the latest update, NASA announced, weather conditions near multiple splashdown zones off the coast of Florida remain unfavorable for NASA's SpaceX Crew-8's return from the ISS. If weather conditions improve, NASA and SpaceX will target no earlier than 3.05 a.m. October 20th for undocking. They also mentioned that mission managers are closely monitoring conditions as the weather is expected to remain unfavorable for several more days. The next weather briefing is scheduled for October 18th at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Savings Time. These delays highlight the ongoing challenge of splashdown recoveries. Unlike landing on solid ground, splashdowns recover favorable sea and wind conditions to ensure a safe reentry and recovery. SpaceX has refined the process, but with parachutes involved, weather plays a big role. However, if needed, SpaceX has revealed that Dragon's Super Draco thrusters can act as a backup landing mechanism should any issues arise. Speaking of delays, NASA recently shared an update that reflects their uncertainty about when Boeing's Starliner spacecraft will fly next. While SpaceX is searching forward, there's been some turbulence on Boeing's side with the Starliner program. NASA has just released an update, and it looks like Starliner's road to recovery might be longer than expected. So how does this all stack up? 
After numerous technical issues during the first crewed test flight, NASA is still unable to confirm a timeline for Starliner's next launch. Their recent schedule includes two Crew Dragon missions, Crew 10 and Crew 11, for February and July of 2025, respectively, while Starliner remains penciled in for a potential 2025 flight pending certification. NASA's update further highlighted the hurdles Boeing faces in getting Starliner certified for operational readiness. After serious issues with the fuel system and thrusters, Starliner's future looks increasingly uncertain. Boeing may even be forced to fly another crewed test mission, which would be a major setback after all the delays and funding they've received from NASA. Once again, SpaceX is showing its superiority in crewed space missions, while Boeing and Starliner remained mired in setbacks. With continued improvements to the Raptor engines, a growing cadence of missions, and NASA's reliance on Dragon, it's clear that SpaceX is at the forefront of human space exploration. Well folks, that's about it for today's episode. Thank you so much for tuning in, and as always, this has been Kevin from Great SpaceX. Until next time, keep looking up.